Hello, and welcome back to another new school year. On Monday afternoon, we discovered who was going to be the new Prime Minister, with the televised announcement by Sir Graham Brady to a packed room of Conservative MPs. Now, it's certain that both Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak were well prepared for their initial response, because the first speech of a new office holder always has great significance in laying out their priorities and the tone of their leadership. In a more substantial speech on the Downing Street doorstep on Tuesday, Liz Truss further laid out her priorities to deal with the fuel crisis, amongst other things. As a school community, we've had a little experience of this situation as well. On Monday, our new head of school, Alexis, spoke to us about his vision and his priorities for the coming year. He did a very similar thing with the senior leadership team on Tuesday. Thankfully, though, he resisted echoing the words of Sir Winston Churchill when he became Prime Minister in 1940. On this occasion, he said, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. This is in contrast to 1979, when Margaret Thatcher said these words wrongly attributed to St Francis, where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Many US presidents have used their formal inauguration address to offer words of inspiration. In the midst of overwhelming economic difficulties of the 1930s, Franklin D. Roosevelt said in 1933, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Many years later, in 1961, John F. Kennedy told his fellow Americans to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. However, you do have to be careful about what you do when delivering stirring speeches. In 1841, William Henry Harrison died of pneumonia one month after his inauguration address. This was believed to have been brought on by the length of his opening speech on a freezing cold and wet day. But it's not just clear priorities that offer inspiration for people. This has to be coupled with authenticity and character. In the first ever presidential inauguration address in 1739, George Washington said that no event filled him with greater anxieties than to be called to be the nation's president. He went on to talk with great humility about his own deficiencies, weaknesses, and even mixed motives. All of this led him to speak to those listening about the importance of prayer to God, whose providential aid can supply every human defect, as he said. Now, the first words of Jesus as he begins his ministry in John's Gospel are, interestingly, somewhat abrupt. He is recorded as asking two would-be followers, what do you want? Now, this actually has surprising depth, as it is his invitation to consider what they really want in life. They will discover that his leadership and their discipleship will actually have as its priority a life of self-giving love. Now, before this is recorded, John has already spoken of Jesus as the word made flesh and full of grace and truth. Throughout his gospel, John then explores the theme that in Jesus you can see both the character of God and also what human beings can truly be, our potential. Now, this concept, I think, is both inspiring and challenging. How different would the world be if political debate, economic policy and our care for the planet were full of grace and truth. Furthermore, how different would our lives and our human interactions be? How different might our school community be if day by day we were all full of grace and truth? Perhaps, maybe, with the help of God, we can be. Bless you all.